it's so heavy. Hi, I'm Arina. Do you wonder what kind of material that we use to make luggage bag so it can accommodate a lot of heavy things? Sit back and relax because I will explain it to you. The material that we use to make luggage bag is polycarbonate. Polycarbonate is well known as thermoplastic. It is a transparent thermoplastic polymer with organic functional group linked together by carbonate group. Um, it offers uh, armor force, a good heat resistance that can stable up to 135 degrees and also a good, a high strength making it resistant to any impact or fracture. That's why it's suitable to make luggage bag because it's virtually unbreakable and can make anything that we pack in this luggage bag safe and secure. Hence, most of the major brands offer material, uh, polycarbonate material luggage bag as one of the options in the catalogue. However, it can be quite expensive because this material is quite thick. Polycarbonate is manufactured by condensation polymerization of bisphenol A and also porcelain. The four common methods that we use to manufacture polycarbonate is extrusion, injection molding, flow molding and also thermoforming. Polycarbonate is melted and forced into a mold with a high temperature to give it a size shape. I'm really interested to look forward and explore more about this material and how this material combines with other material to create more useful things in the future. That's all from me. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I'm Haula and I'm going to tell you about nail polish. I choose this material because in our country, its use is frowned upon and over the years I have understood why. Conventional nail polish consists of a polymer, most commonly nitrocellulose dissolved in a solvent, usually ethyl acetate or retyl acetate. When it's applied, the solvent evaporates leaving the polymer to form a film on the nail. Adhesive polymer resin that are also contained within the formulation help the polymer film to stick to the nail. This so-called film modifiers that also impart a glossiness to the polymer finish. It can be so dangerous for us because it contains several endocrine disruptors including triphenylphosphate which disrupts your hormonal system and yeah. decreases your fertility. Nail polish has physical properties which are quick drying time, liquid form until applied to nail, unless specified as made, shiny appearance and durable, difficult to chip, but it also has uh, it also has chemical properties like it's not reactive with water, very flammable and creates a hard film when exposed to air for a prolonged period of time. I think it's all for me. Assalamu alaikum, I am Usaidi and I'm going to talk about the outer shell of motorcycle helmet. So the outer shell of motorcycle helmet is made of polycarbonate which is a group of polymer, a group of thermoplastic polymer that contain carbonate group inside the chemical structure. So why do we use polycarbonate as for the outer shell helmet material is because polycarbonate are strong and tough material they can prevent from anything to be piercing through the through this helmet and they are also easily to be work and they are thermoform which means you can shape them when when you hit them you can shape them easily such as you want to make them round or bigger or smaller yeah, it's easy to shape them and they are lastly they are very light they are very light because we have other strong materials such as metal but metal are not as light as polycarbonate while polycarbonate are very very light that you can wear, wear it while traveling with motorcycle for example such a, for a long time and you won't feel uh, uncomfortable if you use polycarbonate as the material for the outer shell of motorcycle helmet. That's all for me. Thank you. My name is Abdul Uh I want to talk about spectacles. I also wear spectacles, but this is my grandmother's spectacles. My grandmother's, so set, uh, just as an example. So, uh, yeah, actually, I want to talk about the optical glass. What is this optical glass? It's made of it. Uh, so it made of ceramic. Ceramic is uh, metallic and non-metallic elements. Uh, the composition of these optical glasses is actually from silicon dioxide, soda and also lime. They actually the burn the sand quartz which contain which contain the composites and uh, until 1200 degree and then 
they cool it down and they have a clear glass uh, they have two types of the optical glass the first one is ground glass uh, which is the sodium soda lime glass and also the other one is flint glass flint glass is contain about 55 or 65% of lead outside the the materials have a high density and also high dispersion of light and also high refractive index number which is good to our eyes to see more clear when the light refract to the optical glass Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh My name is Muhammad Adi Haikal Ben Sofis Harati and things that I choose for my presentation is this inner floor lamp or usually we call it as fluorescent lamp so uh, there is a lot of type of glass like lead glass and gross liquid glass these three is the most common glass we know because we can see in our daily life the gross liquid glass is a type of hard glass which is used in the lab in the, in the lab as a lab way and the lead glass is usually the glass that have color like blue, red, yellow or any other color and the sodanum glass is a transparent glass this type of glass this glass is actually transparent but to make the light refracted even better they put the they put uh, phosphate in this lamp to make sure the light is refracted evenly so the property of this light is it is easily tempered and toughened that's why we can see it in a road shape right now and it is low melting point and we can use it as a blow glass work and you also have high coefficient of thermal expansion meaning uh, in a high in a high temperature it can expand to in a bigger shape it also have poor thermal and chemical resistance it is cheap so it's great for business and industry and it has the chemical structure is amorphous which means it is very easy to break and the last one is the com composition of this of the soda lamp is silicon oxide natrium oxide and calcium oxide just uh, remember it as uh, sinaco nitrogen and calcium all of it is outside so that's all for me thank you hi my name is Aisa and this is my all-time favorite deodorant spray can this spray can is made of aluminium which is one of the type of metal why it is made of aluminium it is because the spray can be easily disposed and recycled safely. Normally, spray can are made from a thin sheet of steel coated with another aluminium plate to stop it rusting or reacting with the product before it gets through the various steps of manufacturing. Why not other material? Generally, we can only find cheaper deodorant in a roller form because it is made from plastic so the plastic is not suitable to store aerosol which is it must be stored in pressurized container which means aluminium is the most strong material to manage high pressure liquid gas next the properties of aluminium it is non-corrosive easily machined and cast then it is lightweight yet durable what I want to learn more about aluminium is why is it used widely in household tool and its uniqueness of the electroplating process in the making of aluminium product. That's all from me. Thank you. Hi everybody, I'm Amiro. Today I'm going to talk about the science behind these black parts from large cosmetics. So this black part is a thermoplastic polymer. It's black because it's made up of recycled materials, mainly crystalline, polyethylene, terephthalate. Now, why do they choose this material? This black part is made out of a post-consumer recycled materials or PCR. PCR is anything that we recycle at home, includes something, some waste that's ended up in the landfill or in the ocean. And as for that, it costs a lot less to use recycled waste than virgin materials. How do large recycle this black part? 
this sand black parts by customers will be granulated using a granulator and that will actually shut up and also raise the parts too as it's super important that they are nice and clean before being sent off then those granules sent off will be tended to be something called noodles that are basically real feedstock that are used by the plastic industry once they've done that the noodles will be sent off and will become a new black part Using PCR materials is less wasteful than virgin materials as virgin materials may have come from the non-renewable sources like petroleum which is bad for the environment. Lastly, this particular material is low density, high in strength and user friendly design. This is why the black parts are recreated. Hi, Assalamualaikum. My name is Farah Fazin and here is the room with the serve that I got the name. But today, I'm not going to talk about this room with the serve. I am going to talk about this bottle. So this bottle is made with one of the ceramic that we already learned in the class, which is glass. So why glass is chosen for perfume bottle in manufacturing? Glass is made from natural and abundant raw materials, silicon dioxide or sand, soda ash and limestone that are melted at very high temperature. At high temperature, glass is structurally similar to liquid. However, at ambient temperature, it behaves like solids. As a result, glass can be poured, blown, pressed, and molded into plenty of shapes. And also, it does not have any harmful chemical that may react with perfumery cool, and their strong wood quality can prevent any kind of external compound from entering inside compared to plastic water, which are in contact with perfume liquid and may melt down and mix with the perfume. That's all from me. Thank you. Hello, I'm Harish Nozi. So I'm gonna talk about this stapler. You see this shiny stapler? So it's made of steel, uh, that kind of metal. Uh, so why do they use uh, this kind of metal? So because um, the because of the property of metal, that said it is hard, it's durable, it's tough. Uh, so they mean that you can use it for such a long time. As you can see, this stapler I've been using it for three years. For the strong part, you can apply a high pressure on this stapler when you are stapler of paper, and the shape would just just be the same. It won't it won't change. So that's why we use metal on stapler instead of other material like let's say we use uh, some kind of polymer, some kind of plastic. So I believe that if we apply a uh, high pressure on that. I think it will deform more easily than the one with metal. So how do stapler are made? So stapler are compromised of many components. But you see, uh, you can see the spring, the staple, the body frame. So they just do pressing. They just molding every component and then they assemble all of them together. And then yeah, that's how stapler are made. I think that's all. Thank you. Hi, I'm Hasina and this is my mirror. Did you ever wonder that glass is the main component of mirrors? Why is glass used in mirrors? This is considered a good material for mirrors because of its ability to be molded into various shapes. The glass sheets inside this mirror are made from silica, which is a mineral found in sand. This silica or quartz is melted to a high temperature of about 1200 degrees Celsius. In the industry field, they usually add a flux called soda lime to reduce the melting point. For example, 70% of silicon dioxide is added with 16% of sodium oxide and 5% of calcium oxide. When it cools, it will form blank glass as it won't return to its original state because it does not remember the original configuration. Then, the glass will cut into the desired shape like this rectangle by using a saw with embedded in diamond in the tips. White glass is the most suitable material to make mirrors because it does not scratch easily as plastic does. Also, it does not tarish over time so it can be used long term and it is economically low cost. Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, I'm Mama Ali Fikri. 
So I'm gonna talk about this one, this thing is, a, which is a mouse pad. Uh, as we know that the uses of mouse pad is that we use to handle our mouse. Uh, then uh, mouse pad is very important in our laptop accessories. Uh, for mouse pad, uh, mouse pad, which is a uh, material for mouse pad, mouse pad um, have made uh, from many things, but. The common mouse pad using uh, used uh, make by the fiber because uh, we know that um, fiber is a very strong uh, materials and fiber also is uh, waterproof so mouse pad can use more longer and and more strong and then um, uh, by using fiber uh, we can do a lot of work. Uh, comfortably because uh, as we know that fiber is very soft that like this mouse pad using by uh, made by fiber so um, mouse pad is a very common thing in our life as usual as you uh, for example for the student and the workers so uh, that's uh, the reason why I choose mouse pad uh, for my presentation I think that's all from me thank you hi assalamualaikum my name is Mama Haziq what I have here is a hole puncher. There are two types of hole puncher. One that uses electricity and the other one is the manual hole punches like this. But what I really want to share with you is the material that is used to make this device which is metal. This type of uh, hole puncher use uh, hand powered lever mechanics and the lever is made out of metals and the cutter is also made out of metals. Hole puncher is commonly used to make holes in uh, thin objects like paper. Back in the days, people found out that in order to cut uh, an object, you need something stronger than the object. So they chose metals. Uh, metals is just so much stronger than paper as it can puncture through many layers of papers at the same time. You might be wondering, why don't they just use uh, hard plastic like resin? Uh, it's just that metal is just so much stronger than plastic. Even though there are some plastic that offer some durabilities, but when it gets overloaded, it will snap without warning. Metal, on the other hand, is strong, yet ductile. When it's overloaded, it bends, and that will give you enough time to notice that uh, it is overloaded. And that's all for me. See you next time. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Mawad Taufik. Today, I would like to talk about this card. The reason why I choose card is because in the modern era nowadays, cards are a common thing that everyone should have like identity, uh, identity card, credit card, student card and so on because everything become digital in terms of its usage. But did you know how it is made? Cards are made of several layers of plastic laminated together. The core is commonly made from plastic resin known as polyvinyl chloride acetate (PVCA). Now, uh, let's look uh, look at this card. Uh, even it is coming from plastic, but it is quite hard uh, due to many layers of plastic laminated together in the process. Uh, so, uh, it will not uh, bend uh, easily. Uh, it is also appropriate. Um, to make from plastic uh, rather than other material in order to make it easy to bring anywhere so it is uh, very light uh, for us to bring anywhere and also the waterproof uh, property also implemented to avoid the cut from being damaged easily that's all from me hi i am shamir rosman this is my padlock and I want to talk more about padlock and this is my padlock for the local safety when I'm not around in the room. And here I want to talk more about this padlock. This padlock is made from metal and basically it comes from the hardened steel. Actually many types of padlock is made from boron alloy steel. The material needs to be considered as it is important for the safety. This padlock is constructed from a series of metal plates that are fixed together. Hardened combination material in my padlock will make it more difficult and stronger and tougher to cut by the robber or someone else when I'm not around in the room. 
padlock is not made from the other material like plastic because um, the material itself is not as strong as the metal. It is because it can easily be opened by the others and can turn out and change into the other shape. The properties of the metals are high melting points, good conductors of heat and also the good conductors of electricity. Many more information that I want to learn about this metal is about its physical and chemical reaction for sure. So I think that's all from me. Thank you. Hi, Assalamualaikum. My name is Nurul Karinisa. And in this video, I will be talking about one of the makeup tools I use on a daily basis, which is these eyelash curlers. There are many types of eyelash curlers out there, but the most common one being this uh, traditional one, like the one I'm holding right now. And there are heated ones too. The function of an eyelash curler is to help create a band in your lashes to create an illusion of a bigger eye. These curlers are usually made of metals, and there are rubber parts along where the curler make contact with the lashes. The metal used to make these curlers are called stainless steel. This metal is made from raw materials of carbon, iron ore, chromium, nickel, and other elements that are melted together. Things of varieties of basic chemical elements that when fused together create a powerful alloy. The properties of stainless steel that made it very suitable for daily use is that it is very durable, it is very long lasting, very lightweight, it is resistant to corrosion and temperature, and most importantly, it is environmentally friendly. Metals generally provide more advantages over plastic because it is more resistant to heat and it is more durable. Assalamualaikum everyone, I'm Rauda and this is a Pyrex plate. Pyrex is just a brand name but the type of glass used is called a borosilicate glass. So borosilicate glass is made by melting substances at exceedingly high temperature than traditional glass that is up to 550 degrees Celsius for extended period of time. Then the molten material is then processed into different type of glass. The properties of borosilicate glass are low term expansion that makes it more resistant to temperature change high material strength that can withstand blunt force impact better and chemical stability in which it can withstand corrosion and breaking when exposed to acidic environment. This type of glass is composed of 59.5% of silica sand, 21.5% of boric acid, 14.4% potassium oxide, 2.3% zinc oxide and trace amount of calcium oxide and aluminum oxide. In such cases where borosilicate glass is used in cookware, the silica composition may be as high as 81% depending on its usage. So what makes borosilicate glass different than the normal glass? So the major difference that is regular is that the normal glass tend to shatter when suddenly heated or cooled. But borosilicate glass, it's stable enough to handle all duties of ceramic and metal kitchen item. Other applications of borosilicate glass are like laboratory glassware, cooking utensils, um, pharmaceutical glass tubing, and also optical equipment. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Muhammad Zaim Muzisham, and my number is 2121481. So here with me, it is a spoon. Not a normal spoon, but it's stainless steel spoon. Okay. So steel is a alloy of iron and carbon. And it consists of the item of iron, chromium, 11%, and 1.2% 1, 1 of carbon. So, the uh, chromium in the stainless steel uh, will prevent the steel from the formation of dust. And also the carbon will act as a stopper to give the tendency, uh, tendency to localize, to the localize of the arrangement of the atom of the iron. Okay. So, my spoon will be more stiff, strong, and durable than the other material spoon. As we can see, there we, we have a uh, plastic spoon and silicone spoon. Yeah. And this uh, stainless spoon is also have higher tensile strength. Why I choose stainless stainless steel spoon because it is more convenient. It's easy to be clear and whip, wipe off. As, of course, it is durable than the other materials, and also the price is affordable. Uh, the sixth step uh, to make stainless steel is first melting, second forming, and the heat treatment, the scaling, cutting, and finishing. That is for me. Assalamualaikum.
Hi, I'm Manu Rahim. As you can see, behind me, there is a huge PVC pipe that is used to transport water. But sometimes, I wonder, why are pipes that we use in our daily life are mostly made of PVC, like this? Hi, I'm back. Wait, first of all, did you all know what actually PVC pipes is? Don't worry, I got you. PVC pipes, or the actual name polyvinyl chloride pipes, are made from a thermoplastic polymer, which means it is made out of plastic and ply. After some research over PVC pipes, I have found out that it is becoming more common to use polymer water pipes due to many advantages of plastic over metal. The word plastic means pliable or something that can be easily shaped. This property of plastics and numerous other features make it a valuable raw material for the piping industry. In terms of safety, polymer pipes are a safe choice for transporting clean and healthy drinking water. These pipes offer high degree of inertness and resistance to corrosion. Other than that, PVC pipes are the most cost-effective choices compared to other piping materials. The cost to purchase, install, maintain, and operate is significantly lower than other materials such as metal. As you can see, PVC pipes is a product of modern technology that offers reliable and durable service to a variety of users. Lastly, I hope I can learn more about PVC pipes by looking at how it is manufactured and seeing the process of melting, heating, extruding, cooling, and cutting in front of my eyes. That's all for me. Thank you. Assalamualaikum, my name is Edwin Sofia. I'm going to share about how tissue papers are made. Tissue paper can be made from virgin paper or recycled paper. Virgin papers are made using 30% softwood which have longer fibers intertwined together forming stronger paper and 70% hardwood that have shorter fibers making paper softer. How is tissue made? Log trees are debarked, shaped and added with cooking chemicals before set to digested to be cooked for up to 3 hours, evaporating moisture which produce pulp. Pulp is washed, bleached, and mixed with water for paper stock production. Paper stock is sprayed between mesh screens to drain water, producing matted fiber sheet, then sent to Yankee Dryer, a huge heated cylinder, to press and dry the paper. Next is scrapping, where paper is scraped off Yankee Dryer using metal blade to give extra softness and wrinkled look. Then paper is wrapped around jumbo reels before sent to converting machines. Paper is unwind, slid, rewind onto cardboard tubing, forming paper lock that will be cut into rolls and packaged. Tissue from recycled paper undergoes same process, but instead of logging, recycled paper is mixed with hot water and detergent in a pulper, forming pulp. Pulp sent through screens and rings to remove inks and paper coating, whiten and sanitize before going to paper stock production stage like virgin paper. Bleaches used to make virgin paper are usually chlorine-based, which is dangerous to environment, while recycled paper use oxygen, ozone, sodium hydroxide, or peroxide. So that's all from me. Thank you.